This segment is sponsored by Sean Cook Law. You've purchased the ring and set a date, secured a venue and printed all those pretty invites. But what about the prenup? Attorney Sean Cook is here to talk about the wedding details most people hate to have to discuss. Hi, Sean, good to see you. Hey, good morning, Catherine, how are you? I am well. What is a prenup exactly? You know, it's really a contract between the parties that in the event that something goes awry, that the marriage does not work out, or in the event that there's a death of a party, that the terms of how things are going to be distributed is already in place. So these we do before the marriage, but you can actually go in after the marriage has been, been done, signed and sealed, and work one out. Yeah, in fact, there's a lot of times in which we're three, five years into a marriage and the parties decide, hey, let's kind of solidify this thing. We're getting a little bit older. Let's have something, a contract between the two of us. But, but with the prenup itself, what are some of the reasons that somebody might want it? I always hear, you know, there's a boatload of money on one side or the other, but that's not the only reason, is it? No, that is one reason, inequity in assets and someone's concerned about losing it. The other, I think another really big reason we see is that there's family owned assets that are brought into a marriage. Usually a lot of the family members are concerned, hey, we don't wanna lose that business if there's a divorce or a death. We don't wanna lose the cottage. You know, those are things that um, we try to keep separate in these prenuptial agreements, or there's maybe some compensation in the agreement to give up those things later on. Mm. Okay, so when you're going to the table to work this out, what are the kinds of things that you need in order to, to work out a deal, so to speak. Right, so if you really wanna have a good prenuptial agreement that makes sense and it's gonna be upheld by the courts, first of all, you have to have complete disclosure of all your assets and liabilities because otherwise, someone signing a contract not knowing what they're giving up or what they would have been entitled to. So that has to be there. In fact, it has to be attached to the prenuptial agreement. You need some space between the time that you enter into this agreement in the time period in which you get married. So we don't have arguments about duress or being forced or you know, literally a wedding at gunpoint or a contract at gunpoint. And you need also to make sure that there are attorneys involved. I say this because you know a lot of the provisions that go into this have some legalese. We try to remove a lot of that, but you wanna make sure that if you're going to sign a document of this nature, you know what it means. You know what you're getting up, giving up, you know what you're getting. And you know what the consequences are long-term if things go south. But what if you do get then into the marriage and you realize some, well, somebody has some regrets about it? Can a prenup be set aside? Well, by agreement, of course, you can always change a contract. But in the event that you get to the litigation stage because the divorce is broken down, there are times in which the courts will set them aside. Again, if there's duress, if there wasn't you know, a complete understanding of assets or liabilities, We've also had a lot of changes in the law in which the court now has started to look at these prenuptial agreements and while they might consider them valid, they might knock out some of the provisions if they are creating a huge inequity and maybe someone's contributed to an asset during the marriage or maybe someone has a, a extensive need and then the court will look at that and say, you know what, this prenup's not to me fair in these two concepts and therefore we might do some adjustment. And, and in that case, do both sides have to have agreed to go in or might one side say, hey, I don't think this is fair. Let's get a tune-up. How does that work? Right. Well, the tune-up itself, in other words, to change the terms of the contract, that's going to have to be by agreement. But if things fall apart and there's actually a divorce and the court has to start looking at whether this is a valid prenup or a fair prenup, that might be something that the court changes on its own directive simply because of the law that's been created. All right. Wow, it's complicated stuff, but important conversation to have. Do you recommend it for everybody who's getting married? No, not for everybody. I mean, I think if you don't have a lot of assets, if this is your first marriage, you're young, you don't bring much to the table, I don't know that you have to have that conversation. But if you have a second or third marriage, you're bringing in assets, you have adult kids or young kids that you wanna make sure are taken care of if things fall apart, that is a very important conversation. Yeah, all right, thanks, Sean. Uh, if you'd like to make an appointment to consult with Sean, I have put her contact information on our website, 13onyourside.com.